It's amazing what you can often see when you're just looking at the sun. Actually, this is super, super rare. This, uh, well, it's not that it never happens, but in my entire life, I've only ever seen a plane go in front of the moon once. And it actually turns out, um, since I've been doing more of this, I've actually seen planes go across the sun a, a few times, but this is the first time I've actually caught one on video. So what you actually have here is the telescope's set up to take one picture every second or so. So this is several seconds, and these are, if you like, the raw, unprocessed images of a solar flare on the, the edge of the sun. Now I can actually do a lot better than that. So what you tend to do is you get a program like this. It's called Registack. And what this allows you to do is you can take uh, some images of the sun. So let's take a hundred or so images of the sun. And we're going to set some align points. As you can see, it's terribly sophisticated to use. We're going to click a line. Uh, it takes some time to chunter all through this. You'll see later on that there is an absolute colossal amount of work if you want to make a decent time lapse out of this. And also, I mean, even for me, there's there's a learning curve in a lot of this stuff. Um, and it turns out, even though I spent all day basically guiding the telescope, making sure it stays on target, it, it's still not really hidden the mark that it should do. Okay, so it, it's drifted a bit, so we're going to stack all of the images, and once we've stacked all the images, we can do this thing called a wavelet analysis. Don't know exactly what it is, but it's some sort of mathematical jiggery-pokery that allows you to average out some of the noise. And that's not how it's supposed to work. Um, so, uh, let's try coming down and going for image 100 It says it's all in the middle of the frame. So 256 to, yeah, they all look fairly decent. Good. And set up the align points and align them. And it'll take a few, few seconds to do all of this. But once you do all of this, you can reduce the noise on the, Im the image for getting on for an order of magnitude. So it turns out for most things in astronomy where you're looking at something small, your biggest battle is getting the atmosphere stable enough. So what all this, this averaging does is it allows you to get rid of some of that shimmer from the atmosphere. Okay, and hopefully now, once we stack all these up, we'll get an image that we can do this wavelet analysis on. Now, it's a big problem doing this with the sun, of course, because with the sun, the atmosphere is never terribly stable because it gets hot during the day. Um, good. So here we go. Here's our little blow up. And we've got these wavelet things that we can, we can do some tinkering with. What you'll find is these wavelets actually I really do allow you to Yeah, this is getting there. Um, so you can play with around with this for a bit. Uh, this is not too bad. And then you have to do that for the whole of the image. And then you can actually sort of look around the whole of the image and see what you got. So uh, that's obviously much better than what I started with, and if you're keen, you can you know, some sort of gamma ray type corrections as well, and uh, you know, pull different parts of the image out. But obviously, the more processing you do on this, there's, I mean, this is just one image, bear in mind. If you're on a time lapse, you have to do this for, oh, uh, I thought I was being fairly cavalier and I had to do it with 250 images in the end. So I spent all evening sort of lining up these these frames and everything. And then after that, you have to... Uh, so these are now my... Uh, 
images as you can see i've i've got to recenter every one now uh and you get a video where you can actually see um, if i just go through it sort of frame by frame you can see all sorts of glorious movement in there and just how quick it is bear in mind these are about 100 frame shots and it's what over a frame a second so you're looking at about two minutes and just just look at this region here yeah it's just over a few minutes it's really pretty dynamic and yeah So the reason that um, it's a bit of a, um, a crash and burn this one is it turns out that if the the mm, the telescope only goes in one wavelength of light and the wavelength of light it turns out that it sees in varies very slightly over the field, which means that um, you actually see slightly different perspective on the flares in one part of the field than another this is no good uh, the reason it was all over the place like this is my telescope wasn't very well polar aligned because you, it's actually quite hard to polar align the telescope during the day um, and so I mostly was doing this sort of fairly mostly with manual tracking so I spent a lot of time manually tracking all of this just to keep it in the field of view but you've not just got to keep it in the field of view, you've got to keep it in the right area of the field of view, which I wasn't doing. Um, which is why on some of these you'll see uh, it looks like it changes hugely, but it's not. That's just, um, you're seeing slightly different wavelengths of light. Uh, but when you are actually seeing more or less all in the same, some of these are incredible. I mean, look at this little flare down here. Just watch him. He goes one way and he goes back. Spraying out over the surface of the sun. And the, 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 there's quite a few of these little jumpers like that, you know? And they're, they're, they're fast. I mean, what you're looking at here from it going one way to the other is about 10 frames or something. It's, you know, 10, 15 minutes or something to do that. Um, now the size of the earth on this is going to be about that sort of size and yeah there's basically nothing in the entire solar system that moves this quickly uh in the if you were to look at clouds on the surface of the earth they go what at tops 100 miles per hour this thing is going thousands of kilometers uh in minutes wow Look at some of this detail here, it's awesome. So I think I can actually do much better than this, but I've got to get the telescope better aligned. But just so you know, each, uh, there's just this colossal amount of work involved in this. I only tell you that, and th th this is what it looks like if you just watch it all together. So this is actually over the period of about three or four hours uh, and I think I can actually do much better than that. Uh, it's not bad, in fact it's very, very good, but um, uh, it's uh, with the, when I get the telescope polar alignment sort of spot on, you won't get any of this weird sort of flickering that you get here, that'll all vanish. So. Yeah, that's hours, hours and hours of work that. Um, so hopefully when I get a really nice time lapse like this, I'm going to put it on uh, my main channel because, uh, you know, what, what have I done? I've done time lapses of the movements of the moons of Uranus, of the rotation of Jupiter, of the shadows on the moon. I've never actually done, uh, have, have I done eclipses? I think I've done an eclipse actually. But anyway, yeah, this I think would be awesome. Uh, you know, because that's actually what's going on in the sky right now in real time.